everyone, Sophia here, my great challenger. Welcome back to my Etsy shop, Frenchie and Tubby. I'm going to preview seven items to be live in the shop tomorrow at 5 p.m. That would be Friday, March 8, 2024. I have animals and lots of pottery and a little bit of glass. So let's start with the animals and the ones that are in the thumbnails. And I know, I know, I already got people interested in them. So if you want the cats, 5 p.m., okay? And if, by the way, if you don't see them on the main page, you have to filter by most recent or go straight to decorative items. <laughs> They'll be in there. Anyway, 1960s pair of Rosenthal Netter um, ceramic pearlescent iridescent cats these are the eight inch version they had 12 inch and eight inch they're super super cool and they felt bottom uh they sell the stickers that says made in taiwan most of that stuff was made um either in japan or taiwan during those times and then all of the manufacturing got switched to china as you know so let me give you a close up. Gotta put my specs on because I never know if I'm in focus or not. They originally came, uh, and I think I mentioned that in a previous video in one of my thrift with me. They originally came with a spray of dried flowers. And you can see there's still a little bit of the glue uh, right here that was holding it. This is all gonna be gone by the time I'm done cleaning them and putting them. In the shop but they are I'm hoping the reticent shows so it's got a little bit of a rainbow on it which makes it really cool because it means that it can go with any decor so they are light I would not use those as bookends I'm just saying you now they are too light if you want to use them as bookends what you would need to do is cut the felt right here at the bottom put a weight in them um it can be anything it can be a, a ball of clay or a, um, a rock something metal you know whatever and then put the uh, or you just pour plaster in them and then you put the felt pad on again because otherwise they are very light and they hollow so these are not meant to be um bookends they are meant to be just decorative and shelf sitters um you know Put them on either end of a shelf, either looking at each other or looking away from each other. But they're really cool. I don't know what kind of cats they are. They look Siamese to me. So white Siamese iridescent cat. And they buy uh, the brand Rosenthal, which you all know or heard of. 1960s. Some people claim they're from the 50s. I don't see the 50s style in it. It's getting more towards the uh, rounded, uh, groovy style of the mid 60s going into the 70s to me uh, but they're really cool and they are in perfect condition so obviously they were on a shelf for a very long time um no crazing nothing so cool now this i would definitely keep <laughs> i would definitely keep this so rosenthal netter 1960s iridescent a uh, pair of cats Next item. Okay, so I picked them up because I thought they were really cool. And I know that a lot of people collect owls. And then I did some research and they are something. These are the book ends, owl book ends that I picked up at Goodwill. If you remember, you probably saw me um, actually source those at the Goodwill. And I did some research and there are a lot of different types of wooden or wood carved owls out there, but those are super special. So there was a poet in Kashmir, India, and he went by the name of Suffering Moses. And he was doing hand carving and selling his hand carving. And each one of them, he never mass produced them, but he did quite a lot of them. And it was all about knowledge. And you know that owls usually are considered symbols for knowledge and wisdom. Clearly, he was making them for a Western market. Um, but they are 
literally made out of solid wood and they are almost perfectly identical and I'm hoping you can see that there's very rarely any kind of design difference so they are a mirror image I would say maybe this one is a little bit smaller than the other um, yeah just a tiny bit smaller and minor differences in them so they are made of solid wood uh, so this book and the stack of book right here are one piece of wood and then this owl is one piece of wood so it's two piece each and they are bookends they a little heavy not super heavy but enough for bookends and I think they're lovely absolutely lovely they're in very good condition even the pages of the book I carved into the wood on all of the books um, even the one right here and hopefully you can see what they look like aren't they awesome be speckled <laughs> um, so we have two wise old owls on a stack of books they're wonderful totally would keep those two um, okay when I come back we move into pottery next I hope you like yellow this is really different I'm gonna sell it as a set um, only because I don't want to divide it so this is Alpa Nuestra it's Argentinian pottery I have four cups it's just so cool it's so different um, a little honey pot or jam pot or mustard pot and the matching butter dish so let's look at one of the cups so you can see what's different about them so you know when you do pottery um, once your pottery is set and the choice is to either glaze it or not glaze it so this is half and half but not only is it half and half it's got like different types of techniques on it so let me give you a close-up because they are so different so the glaze is yellow and it's a very thick glaze I don't know if you can see but there's definitely like a ridge between the glaze and the non glaze part and then where it's not glazed you have this matte finish right which is the actual um, clay but then they painted over it and did a design which sometimes goes into the glaze but they also added this dye that makes it look like it's burned or ink stain maybe that's probably a little bit more delicate in terms of a description uh, so they are very different so I have four of those and of course because they are handmade not a single one of them is a repeat of the other Alpa Nusta is the name right here Alpa Nusta I, I said Nuestra uh, I what do they speak in uh, Argentina is it uh, um, Portuguese might be Oof, I don't know I should prepare right but anyway, Olpa Nusta, that's what we're going to call it. So there's four cups. Then there's the honey pot, which it almost looks like the honey is ready to drip. Super cute. Look at this thing. And again, that same design all around. This one is not signed at the bottom. You can even use that as a little vase. I don't have to, uh, I don't have the spoon uh, but you don't have to put the lid on it though the lid is just so cool look at the shape of the lid okay and then I have the butter dish so the butter dish doesn't have the same burnish design on the bell itself it's all glazed inside and on the plate uh, that stain design is at the bottom this is quite heavy and it's all handmade so you're not gonna find two that are the same now 
One of the reasons why I was hesitating uh, and I took my time to put it up in the shop is that these initially came with little plates that were, um, if I find a picture, I'll put it right here, uh, that were a different, they were on round. They were kind of like very abstract looking plates. Um, you don't have to use the plate, but if you have to have a plate, there's plenty of opportunities for saucers that are this type of yellow or even a beige or even a brown. So if you have, you know, you go to Goodwill and you find four little saucers, you can put them on, but you can use those as little mugs. Um, you don't have to use the uh, saucer. I fell in love with this. I thought they was just so unique and different. I've never seen anything like this before. So I suspect somebody either went to Argentina and purchased them and eventually decluttered them or uh, it was somebody who went to Argentina and gifted them to a family members and, you know, in the decluttering frenzy, they let them go. I would never let go of something like this because they are just too unique. I don't know how old they are. I know it's artisanal. I know it's handmade. I know it's from Argentina. Um, the company still exists but they make different designs. So I don't think the yellow like this is still being made. So it's probably discontinued, but they're really cool. So I'm selling it as a set. So you'll get four cups, the honey pot or jam pot and the butter dish. Um, they stack very well, by the way. So if you have an open shelf kitchen concept, what a touch of color in your kitchen. They look really cool for a coffee bar. They're the perfect size for, um, let me see. They're about four ounces. So if you have a coffee bar and you do a little curry with the uh, espresso shot, a little cafe latte, um, they're too small for me. They would be too small for tea, but they're definitely for coffee. Really cool. All right, so that's Alta, Alta uh, Nusta. Is that it? I'm having a hard time. Alpa Nusta pottery from Argentina. Really cool. Okay. On the subject of pottery, you also saw me uh, pick those. Oh. So these are candle holders, obviously. Okay. Um, there's no candle residue. I suspect they were never actually used. But I fell in love with those, not because it's pottery, well, not just because it's pottery, but the color on it and the glaze. Let me make sure. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. And I love the base with the little lip right here. So you can even add little items here at the bottom entirely handmade there is no signature no stamp i looked all over very carefully i have no idea who made these i suspect that whoever made them had a uh, a stamp a, a sticker instead of an actual stamp um but they're really cool there's no indication of who made those. And again, because they are handmade, they look the same, but they're different. Um, tapered candle, short or tall, really neat. I think they're beautiful. So it's two handmade pottery, gorgeous glaze um, candle holder. You got to come back and look at the website uh, after I posted them so you can see close-ups and you'll see what I mean about the glaze okay when i come back three more next item is glass and i know that it's just a little thing and it may not be a big deal but i did a lot of research on those and i i found quite a lot of information i here have four little cordial glasses and you're like ah well what's the big deal sophia we find those at the goodwill all the time okay yes but you won't find those very often i only have four this is what's called uh the brand is dartington crystal they are from england 
Dartington Crystal was founded in 1967 and they existed only for uh, 20 years. So they did 67 to 1987. The guy who designed this specific pattern, it's called Sharon, by the way, um, his name is Frank Thrower and he died in 87, but he's the designer. And what he did, and he was previously working for Port Myron uh, Pottery, if you ever heard of them, the ones that has like all the flower design with the green frieze, put a picture right here, very recognizable. Anyway, so when he went into the company, one of the things that he wanted to do was import Scandinavian glass designs to the company. So these are actually inspired by Scandinavian crystal. They are UK glasses, but the inspiration for the design is Scandinavian. And he's a very, apparently, um, he's a very famous glass designer um, working for that particular company. So they're not any <laughs> cordial or sherry glasses. They are crystal, the four of them. Sharon pattern was produced between, it was one of the very early patterns. So these are from between 67 and 74. Definitely vintage and it is crystal, but they're super light and super fragile. It's a tulip shape. You can see, right? It looks just like a tulip. So tulip shape is my favorite shape, but it is super fragile. So when you clean it, very often we have a tendency to put a little bit of pressure on the rim and that's when it breaks. So you want to be very careful cleaning those, but aren't they gorgeous? super special to me um i think they're beautiful so dartington uk a set of four cordial glasses sharon design and designed by apparently the famous frank Froer. um i learn stuff every day this is one of the reasons why i love doing this because i keep on acquiring knowledge which i'm trying to share with you as i do those videos um you know, in my little blurbs <laughs> in, uh, in the Etsy shop. But, you know, I can't remember what I ate this morning for breakfast, but information like this, I retain. So the next time I go to Goodwill, one of you have asked me, Sophia, how do you know what to pick? It all gets stored in the vault here, <laughs> okay? Um, my empty head has a lot of space for that kind of useless information to some, uh, not to me, obviously. Uh, so I, I recognize pieces and I recognize styles and because I have a photographic memory. So you better believe that the next time I see glasses like this, I'm picking them up. So I don't know if that was somebody bought them in England and imported them here uh, or if they were sold here in the US. I have no idea, to be honest. This is the first time I hear of the brand, which is a good thing because uh, that's added to my list of makers. Okay. Next item, uh, these are actually, I could sell them as a set, but I'm separating them. Brown drip pottery, which I love. These are salt and pepper shakers by Hull Pottery and it's their brown drip pattern. It's their most popular pattern. The next one coming is also a um, brown drip and I still have one last piece. It was part of a set that I purchased. Um, they started making those in 1930 and they stopped in the late um they stopped in the mid 60s just based on the cork at the bottom and the quality of the cork i would say that these are early 1960s and not um part of the original brown drip they're really cool i love the shape um you've all seen brown drip it's Fairly, I mean, I'm not going to say it's fairly common, but usually you find uh, casseroles, pitchers, uh, maybe bowls, but those you don't find very often because it, they're very small. It's easy to knock off a table. There's always a broken one or you're missing the stoppers and these have the stoppers. You got to be careful removing them because you don't want to break the cork, but that's easily replaceable. You know, just put new corks in it. Um, really cool this small salt and pepper so that's the salt and pepper but i have the picture so now i had a uh, um i have a bigger picture oh 
boy, I was going to put this picture on <laughs> and I got a big chip right here. I didn't realize that. Uh, so forget you, you're going into my kitchen. Uh, I'm going to keep you. So we're going to do another item of pottery. Uh, let's pick this. I'm going to pick this. Uh, so this is, uh, you saw me pick it in um, a previous video. This is Franciscan, the apple pattern. You know, they're very known for either the rose or the apple pattern. And this is different. I don't pick Franciscan because it's saturated. There's a lot of it. Uh, on Etsy and on eBay, uh, a lot of people had the Franciscan, either the roses or the apples, uh, as part of their uh, china cabinet. So for replacement pieces, yes, but regular just pieces like, you know, a plate, a bowl, or whatever, I, I just don't pick them. However, I saw this and I was like, ooh, I've never seen that one before. This is fairly modern. This is not vintage. Um, I know that because... It's got uh, the Made in Portugal barcode at the bottom, <laughs> right here. But it's really cool nonetheless. So if you have a kitchen with large counters and like me, and you want to display this, you can use it and display at the same time. You can also use it as a vase um, to put flowers in it. It's the season right now where tulips are gonna come up, uh, daffodils and tulips. I think it would look beautiful as a centerpiece in your kitchen. It is Franciscan pottery, so it's beautiful ceramic, gorgeous glaze throughout, uh, even the bottom is glazed. Nice handle, their regular um, pattern with the apples on it, and it's a functional item. I really like this actually. Um, I would not keep it only because I don't have the room, uh, but I really like this. So that's a Franciscan watering can in their apple design. And that would be it. All these items will be in the shop. Link up here and down below tomorrow at 5 p.m. Again, if you're having trouble seeing the items, just click filter by most recent. And if it's still not showing up, because I know that some of you put alarms. <laughs> to make sure that you're there at 5 p.m. because there's items you don't want to miss out on and it's still not refreshing. It's Etsy, it's not me. It, they take a long time to kind of, um, I guess, post. They read the description and they decide whether or not I can post the item. So make sure there's no offensive stuff in there. But there's a bypass. The bypass is to go straight to the category of the item. So for instance, the cats, would be in decorative, vintage decorative items. So go straight to vintage decorative item. As soon as you open Etsy, that way you'll see them. Those and the owls. So why would I keep? Well, right here, I would keep the owls by Suffering Moses and I would keep the cats um, because they're really cool and they're different. I would also keep these. I don't find South American pottery very often at the Goodwill. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that because I do find um, Mexican pottery, but it's more like the touristy stuff. Um, you know, the things that people buy when they go to Cancun, for instance, right? Uh, but true artisanal pottery, I don't find very often. I found some Barra Negro from Mexico, which every time I find it sells right away. Um, and Argentina. Um, and Argentina apparently is to be added to the list of Southern America of South American pottery that I found. And this one is really cool. I would keep that, uh, but I don't have the room. <laughs> and I need to kind of, you know, be reasonable. I just can't keep everything. You know that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting my shop and making my dream come true of having an Etsy shop selling vintage stuff. This is another happy place for me. I'm very comfortable doing this. I love touching, cleaning, um, wrapping, selling, making people happy with those items. And every time you purchase from Frenchy and Tubby, like I said, you're making my dream come true. You're getting me closer to my ultimate goal, which is to have a vintage booth in an antique mall when I retire. Um, this close. <laughs> One day I'll make the announcement.
and if it's in your area I expect you to come and visit so we can chat in my little booth uh, while sipping tea and eating gluten-free cookies. Thank you for watching and supporting my shop. I'll talk to you later. Bye!